In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this simple shadow box, and you can probably do it in about a weekend. Let's get after it. So one of the things we do really well in the military is show appreciation for each other's time in our unit. So what we'll do is we'll give them a farewell gift when they're leaving the unit after usually three years of time spent, and we'll personalize it. For this one, it was for a very special occasion. It was for when I deployed to Afghanistan. You can actually still see some sand on the inside there, just for keepsake purposes. Uh, and you can personalize all of this to whoever the recipient is. And so you can do something like I've done here. You, there are very frequently some awards or ribbons. You can put coins. You can put a specific metal plaque inside of it. Usually it's centered around an American flag down at the bottom. And so instead of going to some store somewhere and buying one off the shelf, you can personally make it yourself and then give it to the person that's leaving their, your unit or your business or whatever. So let me show you how I do it. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make this out of red oak that you can get out of the big box store. I got mine at Lowe's. When you're trying to select wood, you wanna pick the right pieces for the job. You certainly don't want any bowing or bending or warping. You want straight pieces because you're not gonna to need to take very much off of each piece. When you bring it home, you want to make sure that you take a look and see what parts of the board are not going to be usable and then work around that. For instance, I know I need two pieces that are 18 inches and two pieces that are 17 inches and then two more pieces, which I'll talk about later. So you want to look at things like this knot here. You can fix it, you can hide it, but you can also try to avoid it. And so for my example, I'm going to be able to get two pieces off of this side of the knot and then the rest of the parts I need off of this side. Now that I got my pieces cut, I'm gonna cut a rabbit in this side, which is gonna get rid of this nasty chunk right here. That's where the plywood backer is gonna go. And then on this side, I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch in, I'm gonna start the dado, and then I'm gonna go another eighth of an inch or so, and then finish the dado, and that's where the plexiglass is gonna slide in. That's where you're gonna see into the shadow box. Now, since this is a mitered box, I'm gonna cut 45 degree angles on the top and the bottom of each one of these pieces and for all four. Now the reason why I'm doing it in this order is when I cut the dado and the rabbit, there could be some tear out. So when you chop off that 45 degree angle, it'll get rid of all of that tear out. So let's go ahead and jump on the table saw and get this stuff cut. So initially, I wanted to cut these 45s with this miter saw, but that turned out to be a bad idea. So once I checked how they looked, they were not tight at all. So this wasn't very precise. So instead, I decided to put my table saw blade at 45 degrees and cut them. and that turned out much better. So now it's time to put the edge profiles on the pieces. So I didn't get this on video, but I did use this palm router mounted in my vise 
to cut the roundovers I wanted. So here I am reenacting that for you. Now that I got my parts cut, you can see the things are coming into shape. So the next thing I'm gonna to need to do is cut these pieces to fit where the flag is gonna be. Now what I like to do, just because sometimes measurements are a little bit off, I'll cut the four sides, make sure they're square, make sure it's all set up, stand it up like this, I'll clamp it together here in just a second. And then I'll actually measure to see exactly what those pieces need to be before I'll actually go cut them off. Now. You'll take the cutoff that you didn't cut before to make these pieces, but you're going to have to slim it down because you're going to need that piece to fit between your rabbit and your dado, which is going to be much thinner than the stock that you're using. And so those are the things that I'm going to do now. Now when I'm cutting these angles, you're going to see me nibbling away at it so I can sneak up on that line. And this is what that corner piece should look like. And now I'm cutting the 45 that will be the very tip of this triangle. And then when I do a dry assembly, you'll see that I'm maybe a little bit too long because again, I want to sneak up on that fit. This is what it looks like with a little bit of a contrasting background. You can see that gap. And then I just fine tune the pieces until they're exactly right. So I'll go back to the table saw, shave a little bit, come and try it out, shave a little bit on each side, try it out until I get it right. And then it's time to measure for the width of the inside pieces so I can make those cuts. Then it's time to measure for the plexiglass and cut it to size. Now getting this plexiglass to fit is a real challenge takes quite a bit of persuasion. Then I measured for and cut the plywood for the back. And now it's time for everybody's favorite part of the project, and that's sanding. Now here's kind of a tip, if you're trying to sand something on the small side of it, it'll kind of wobble on you if you're not careful. And so if you stack two to three pieces next to each other, you have enough surface area to keep it from rocking on you, but also you get to sand three pieces at once, so that really helps. Then I use some sandpaper to soften the edges a little bit just so they're not so sharp. And I use some mineral spirits to get rid of all the sawdust. Once the mineral spirits dried, then I could glue up the inside pieces. 
and I'll glue up the triangle first at the tip a little bit of glue a little bit of brad nails and I used 18 gauge brad nails now you want to wipe off all the glue squeeze out at this point so you don't have to clean up dried glue in those tight corners Now just the way this worked out, I'm going to brad nail the, the bottom parts to the sides instead of the very bottom piece. And now for the frame, I don't use any pin nails at all. It's all just glue and clamping pressure. Then it's time to set the frame aside and put the felt on the backboard. Now to do this, I cut it a little bit oversized. And then I use spray adhesive on the board and on the felt. And slowly work from one side to the other to get it to stick without any wrinkles. Then it's time to start putting all your pieces on the inside. Now for this I was doing two shadow boxes at the same time for two different people so you're gonna see me bounce back and forth a little bit. You want to lay out all the pieces where you want them just to get an idea of how it's gonna look. So that's what I'm doing here. Once I had it laid out the way I wanted it, then I measured the precise locations where they're going to go. For this middle piece, I drilled a hole and then sucked up the sawdust and then pushed in the piece. As you can see, you want everything to be super precise so that it looks symmetrical. Now I use this piece of cardboard as a story stick because I want to do the same thing on the other side. I'll do the top one and the bottom one and the middle one and then I'll fill in evenly distributed the rest of them. and then I do the same thing for the other side. Now for this plate, I had to use two-sided tape, so I had to cut out a chunk of felt so the tape would have something to adhere to. Once all that was complete, I cleaned it up and I used some blue painter's tape to get off all the debris that was on the felt. At this point, I applied my first coat of finish, which is Watco's Danish Oil. I used it because I wanted the natural look of the wood to shine through and still giving it a level of protection, but not making it look glassy and fake. And now it was time for the plexiglass to go in. And then I can glue up the final side. Now to attach the back, I'll screw in some screws, but I made sure to drill the holes a little bit angled towards the outside so they didn't come in through the inside of the box.
For hanging hardware, I just used some eyelets and some metal wire, which will be plenty strong enough. At this point, all that's left to do is a little bit of fine tuning on the edges and the corners with a little bit of hand sanding. And then I wrap my sandpaper around this block of wood just to keep this ledge 90 degrees. One last round of mineral spirits to get the sawdust off. And when that dried, one last touch up with the Danish oil. All right, this is the one from about nine years ago, the original. And this is what one of them looked like before the plaque and the flag was added. And this is what the final product looks like. I really like how it turned out. Well, I hope you like this video. We'll see you next time.